Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another exciting episode of Carving the Divine TV. My name is Yujiro Seki. I'm a director, writer, and the producer of the documentary Carving the Divine. Carving the Divine is about the Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and I'm ready to present it for the first time in the world. But before I do so, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce basic concept of Buddhism and the history of Buddhism so that when you guys finally watch my documentary, you guys can watch it at a maximum value. So with that being said, I would like to introduce a, a very special person today. Today, we get to talk about the Shingon Buddhism. Finally, many people wondered what Shingon Buddhism is. It's an esoteric teaching. So what that's supposed to mean? We'll find out all about it. So thank you very much for coming, Reverend Ryuzen Hayashi. Welcome, Reverend. Hello, nice to see you. Uh, my name is Ryuzen Hayashi. I'm happy to be here today. Um, so I'd like to explain what is a Shingon Buddhism is today. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, I know you are very uh, popular in your community, but just in case for the people uh, who don't know anything about you, please introduce yourself. So again, my name is Ryuzen Hayashi. I'm working for the Los Angeles Koyasan Beikoku Bitsuin Temple. I've been working for the temple in six years. So um, the location is uh, Los Angeles downtown. So. I'm from Fukuoka Ken, uh, Fukuoka Prefecture in Japan. And after I uh, graduated high school, I went to the Buddhism University. I, I studied the Buddhism. And I went to Mount Tokoya, well known as uh, the old Shingon Buddhists have a practice. And then I finished my practice. And since 2012, uh, I came US. Nice, nice. Thank you so much for this. And yes, first of all, I would like to ask you this core question. What is Shingon Buddhism? And what is the core teaching of Shingon Buddhism? Shingon Buddhism is, uh, I would say the main uh, core teaching is uh, telling us uh, anyone can become a Buddha. So when people have a practice, Anyone can be a Buddha. This is a main teaching of the Shingo Buddhism. So uh, what we should do, uh, we usually say uh, three things practice, the three mysteries. One is action, one is thinking, and one is uh, speaking. When we are required a good three things all the time. Especially the ritual, when you, when you participate, you can see uh, what people do on ritual. People have some spiritual action, sutra mantra, praying for ancestors, or pray to own wishes. It's based on the three things practice. This is a, what uh, the things Shingon priests provide to the people, the preach to people, three things practice, and try to become a Buddha. Hmm. Nice, nice. That's a uh, very well summarized. Uh, so uh, I heard about the uh, Shingon Buddhism is related to uh, Tibetan Buddhism. So it is like a, a the extension of a, a Tibetan Buddhism. It, or, is, is there any difference? Uh, please tell us about it. So um, visually a little different, but uh, basically I would say same. Uh, especially the um, of the Shingon and the Tibetan Buddhism is blessing. So we do ritual for people's happiness. It's the things coming in the present. So basically other rituals, they pray for ancestors. Uh, they pray for uh, especially the situation after I passed away. But uh, the Shingon and uh, Tibetan, these uh, Buddhisms, blessing uh, is, is possible, is, is able to provide uh, different like, uh, things to the people. So this is a, a, the similarity and the mainly idea is uh, very the combined together. So when the, the Chibetan and the mix up 
uh, with uh, Chinese Buddhism, and it came from China to Japan. So many influences um, that, that between each other we can see. So uh, yes, uh, I would like to hear about the uh, Shingon Buddhism founder, Kukai. So who is Reverend Kukai? Please tell us. He's the founder of the Shingon Buddhism, and he's a very genius person and a very uh, knowledgeable. Um, he brought many things from China to Japan. When he was 20, he became a priest, and he studied Buddhism as his, himself. Um, and he went to the old, the old Japan, he practiced Buddhism. And then eventually he encountered a special scription, name is Dainichikyo. Uh, it's a, one of the sutra of the, the Shingon, um, I would say the esoteric Buddhism. So this sutra written in Chinese and Sanskrit, at, the, uh, at that period in Japan, uh, no one can read it. So the Kukai, uh, our founder, uh, he, he needed the, some master, he, he was, he was need uh, his master. And he decided to go uh, visit China as a priest. And he, he asked his uncle who working for the government and when he was 30, he, ma he made his, his, his dream true. He had a visit to China. And he brought back the old the idea of the Shingon esoteric Buddhism. Hmm. So he had a, like a training or something in China by some uh, uh, secret master? Yes. Uh, when, he, when he visiting the China, uh, he met many things. He met many people, but the, the biggest person was uh, Keika. Um, it's a, uh, retail, retail, literally, it's, he, it's his, his master, the Kukai's master, Keika. Uh, he, he already had... Uh, more than more than a thousand disciple at his Chinese temple, but when he, the Kukai visited the, his temple, he he said that I was waiting for you. I should give all of the uh, things of esoteric Buddhism to you. So you should have uh, this ceremony tomorrow, and then receive everything. That's what the Keika master said. And Kukai received all of them. Then he, uh, he correct many different scripture and the sculptures. And he the, copied uh, all the sutras, mantras, uh, and then bring back everything to Japan after two years later. Mm. Wow. So two years was enough to learn all the teaching? So when the 1970, 1990, so that's very ancient time, uh, going to abroad, it's very, very difficult. Uh, use a ship and this spend a more than a couple of months. Then the, no one knows um, can is make it or not, able to make or not. So, um, so the, the priest who uh, sent send by government for study in abroad usually required a more than 20 years study in abroad. But the Keika say that to uh, uh, Kukai, you should go back to Japan right away. Then you should preach this Buddhism to the people and you should work for the people's happiness as a priest. That's what uh, Kukai received from Keika Master. And there is a very great opportunity uh, at, the, at the period, so Chinese emperor had changed. So the Japan sent different ship to China, like a celebration. He, he correct uh, all the important scripture and the sculptures. By that day, the ship coming to China, and then just in two years, he bring back everything to Japan. Wow, that's uh, quite a story. So uh, 
you told us about the Koyasan. So uh, that's where you had a training, I suppose. But what is exactly Koyasan? Koyasan is established by our founder, Kukai. So um, he, he, when he established uh, Shingon Buddhism in Japan, he thought two places is very important. One is a place for study and um, uh, preach Buddhism to the general. And other place is the practice place for the all Buddhist people, uh, people coming to that place and practice uh, rituals. And then one, then one is a, a play, one, one of the place name is Toji Temple in Kyoto, especially the study place, and the Koya Mount, Koya San. Uh, in these days, the place became a world heritage, very small town you can see on top of the mountain. So that is what we call the Koya San. And Koya San is a main practice place. So uh, many different um, temples and practice place for um, general people um, and a big, uh, the big temple has, uh, you know, uh, very no knowledgeable scriptures. Mm, beautiful. So uh, what is Dainichi Norai? So I know that Dainichi Norai is one of the most important deities or the important deities in uh, Shingon Buddhism, but who is it? What is it? So Dainichi Norai, we say, we call, call, uh, we call um, Universal Buddha, uh, Cosmic Buddha. So he represents a universe. He represents uh, everything. Uh, so this is uh, what the Dainichi Kyo said. So every, anyone can become a Buddha and then so find out the message from the Mahabharata Buddha. So uh, cosmic Buddha is very uh, hard to understand. Word is very sounds hard to understand. Uh, but you could imagine uh, when the universe started. So the Mahabharata Buddha is a cosmic Buddha, uh, is the same as the universe. And then when we think about a universe, how universe started, uh, it's, there was a big bang, a big explosion happened and it spread at the atoms. Then eventually the things occur in this world, the planet, water, dinosaur, and we appear in this time. So now we visually different. So nationality, uh, culture, uh, you know, language where you speak, what language are you, are you speaking? and what gender you are you, our skin color, uh, many different. But when we see the start, so the how universe started, uh, we are same start, you know, we started from the same place. Uh, we are same uh, ingredients. So uh, if you have understand this uh, idea, you can have a very great sympathy with the other people even looks different. So, but uh, if we don't have a visual for it, it's very hard, hard to remember. And it's the Dainichi Kyo uh, visualized, like Buddhism visualized this wonderful, I mean, the eternal kind of the work. So, so we visualize that these things, and that is a Mahabharata Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha and the other Bodhisattva, everyone, uh, actually transformed by uh, Mahabharata Buddha, we believe. So Mahabharata Buddha is a other way to say Dainichi Nyorai? Yes, uh, sorry, I didn't explain this. Mahabharata Buddha is a Dainichi Nyorai in English. So Dainichi Nyorai is a Japanese, uh, you know, Mahabhar uh, Mahabharata Buddha uh, in Japanese. Okay, okay. So it's coming from Sanskrit, right? I think. Yes, uh, Mahabharata Buddha, uh, the word written in, uh, you know, nowadays because, of, because for the pronunciation, we can write it in uh, Romaji, uh, English letters, but basically it's, everything's written in uh, Sanskrit. Okay, okay, great, great. So uh, you, to understand it co correctly, so Dainichi Nyorai is a basically like a this like a universal like a oneness that we are all related and everybody is one. You know, if I want to make it very simplified, so am I on the right track or 
I'm off track. Please tell us. Uh, you're on track. So we are saying existence on cosmic Buddha is a we uh, the the one we should pray. So uh, main hall of this temple uh, has a Mahavarochana Buddha. Uh, most of the uh, Shingo Buddhism temple has Mahavarochana Buddha. It's because it's a very main Buddha of the Shingo Buddhism. Uh, so. Uh, we guide the people, like disciples or the lay people, are, if they ask me uh, which Buddha I should pray first, so we usually say Mahabharochana Buddha. So because the, 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 he's everything, so anyone can pray to him. So even no gender, so I, don't, I, 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 I think I should say uh, deity. So the deity is uh, Mahabharachana Buddha, no gender, he, not him. Yes, yes, I understand, yes, I understand. but in English sometimes we gotta uh, define she or he, but you know, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. So, uh, so, but in other words, basically, you are uh, Dainichi Nyorai, and I am Dainichi Nyorai, and everybody is a Dainichi Nyorai, that's, uh, that's kind of idea that we are talking about? Yes. Uh, I would say yes. So it's very, very uh, clear, but it's very hard to accept it because there is a people who you dislike and there is a things you, who, you know, you cannot ac accept it. Like, uh, you know, like the awful things happen in the world uh, every day. So everything is uh, uh, some messages, like, you know, how you receive that message from Mahavarochana Buddha and how we think our Buddha food today so that's uh, uh, our requirement, and the Mahabharochana Buddha idea can provide this guidance. So, because if you, you can ignore, you know, things happen in the opposite side of the, uh, the planet. But uh, if you uh, continue to pray to uh, Mahabharochana Buddha, eventually you can uh, construct the great sympathy with uh, all of the nations. Mm. And all the creatures, I suppose. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So uh, the next question is, what is Okyo and what is Dainichikyo? So again, Dainichikyo is uh, one of the, the main description uh, for the Shingon Buddhism. Uh, the, the book explains how people achieve the, you know, the practice and the goal is uh, become a Buddha in the present time. So are uh, tastes like a um, the disciple asking the many questions to the Mahabharochana Buddha, and then the Buddha answer for it. And uh, we we can learn from this um, the book uh, uh, how we have a practice as a priest in the ritual, uh, how what we should do in the general as a priest. Uh, we call it Jisoto Kyoto, so ritual how uh, the like a guidance for the ritual practice guidance for the uh, general life. So the, this book explained the, these two mainly. Hmm. So, and uh, Okyo, the, uh, we call it Sutra. Dainichiko is also one of the Sutra, but there is many different Sutras we using, we are using in currently. Uh, Hat Sutra is a very famous one. Uh, Hanya Shingyo, uh, the, the Lotus Sutra, uh, especially the the definition uh, uh, is uh, definition of uh, sutra is um, it's a, the teaching from Buddha. Uh, in this times, Buddha is uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha was uh, was exists in the ancient time India, and he he, he constructed the basic idea of the Buddhism, and then Buddhism eventually spread the world in. Uh, are uh, you know that became each teaching became a different sect nowadays. So Shakyamuni Buddha, what Shakyamuni Buddha preached to people, disciple correct everything, record everything, and that that's a teaching guidance. Uh, people need to have it for their general life. So need to be uh, understandable. So uh, it's a, the sutra is a, can be translated. So you can see the many different sutra, uh, sometimes in English. Hard sutra, uh, it's very easy to find the, 
the um, translation, English translation uh, on internet. Hmm. Great, great. Thank you so much. And yes, uh, next question is, what is Goma ritual? I know in my movie as well, but you know, we see a ritual, uh, wood uh, burning ritual, uh, which is, could look very mysterious. And maybe Western people might think it's a witchcraft or something. So uh, yeah, I want uh, people not to misunderstand uh, this ritual. Please, please tell us about the Goma ritual. Goma ritual is strong blessing service. Provide uh, some pleasant time benefit, uh, traffic safety, uh, health, health recovery, uh, you know, certain victory, uh, many different purpose and people's wishes uh, I can see. And people can uh, bring that wishes and uh, ask achievement. So, and then uh, the, through the fire ritual, uh, people practice and they get energy from it. And then, so uh, the service uh, encourage them to do more things, more strong. And then uh, anyone can receive some benefit. So that's a fire ritual. And then also uh, based on the three things practice, like our main practice idea, uh, people have uh, hand to put the hand together, we call gasho, then have mantra. So fire ritual has main Buddha, uh, who is uh, Fudo Myo, so angry face Buddha. So he represented a fire, he represented a strong power of fire. So we use his mantra and pray from heart to your wishes or for other people. So people can receive some spiritual energy from the service. And in other hand, they can practice their self. So many, many great benefit people can receive from the blessing service. But main purpose is provide something benefit to uh, directly to the people. So uh, Reverend, so we would like to know about uh, uh, one of the most popular deities of Japan, Fudo Myo-o. Fudo myo is a very important deity. Uh, in English, they say wisdom king. But uh, so uh, tell us, uh, what is Fudo Myo-o? Uh, Please, please tell us all about it. Okay, so Fudomyo is, uh, you said, one of the wisdom king. And so he is uh, one of the deity, uh, represented a strong power. He has a fire in his back and he has an angry face. And uh, we use his mantra for Goma ritual service and use his strong guidance and achieve the, the people's wishes. So uh, he belonged to Kongo uh, uh, deity. Uh, so I mentioned he has a the strong face. So he has a strong power. Even the people need the more strong, like a the strong guidance to go the right way, proper, proper way. Um, Fudomyo can do that. So um, people say Fudomyo looks like uh, very scared. Uh, angry face because of he, he people say uh, sometimes I can see like evil but he's a deity helping the people is he helping the people and has an angry face I could explain why he has angry face so when people had a bad things when he was a child um, especially the parents they going to scold the child don't do that. Why you did it? So with angry face. But parents has different mind. They want to have a good future for you. That's why they scold you. The fix your mistakes. So because of that, you can see why Buddha, the one of the deity, has angry face. And the people, why people pray for him at the spiritual service. Hmm. So uh, 
but you know, fudomyo is essentially、uh, the same thing as a dainichi nyorai, as you said. Yes,、um, dainichi nyorai always transfer to different shape、um, for uh, appropriate. So、uh, I mentioned the fudomyo law is very strong. The people who very very struggle, who are very struggle, they need a strong. Guidance. This service is very strong. We use a strong deity. We do have a bosatsu, bodhisattva, jizo bodhisattva, kanon bodhisattva.、Uh, usually,、uh, most of the temple has has a statue in the outside. You can see it. This temple as well. So mostly the Buddhist Buddhist statue has a very you know calm face,、uh, Buddha face. But、uh, the strong Uh, power makes little different.、Um, angry face, people can more feel the strong expression. So we use this strong deity and the very the famous one, Fudomyo. It's it's very famous in Japan. So in other word, we are some people like、uh, including myself who is a chill child, and、uh, you know I might need a. Strong parents to scold me; otherwise,、uh, I will be straight away from the、uh, teaching of Buddha. Is that correct? Yes, Buddha is、uh, the existence, giving some guidance and knowledge to you. And that I,、uh, that I definitely say, the moment the parents are giving you the、uh, guidance and the wisdom,、uh, they are Buddha. So has angry face Buddha. I mean, the angry face、uh, that does express a strong feeling, like a strong, like a how how strong they they willing to help you. You can see the same idea in Fudomyo's idea.、Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, it's it's a little confusing here,、uh, I think, because you know you say Fudomyo is、uh, the wisdom king, but at the same time, Buddha.、Uh, I hope that, you know some people, or I mean everybody. Can understand uh, uh, this uh, difficult concept. I hope. I hope so too. Why, why is Shingon Buddhism called esoteric Buddhism? By the way, so what is so esoteric or secret about it? So、uh, secret. Uh, this this word comes from the the aspect or、uh, the teaching is supposed to、uh, pass the generation、uh, by speaking. So this is uh, 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 the, especially recently.、Uh, actually, the, from the beginning,、uh, e- even modernly,、uh, we continue to do that. So we receive the teaching, especially how to have a mudras, how to pronounce the, the sutra and the mantras.、Uh, we receive it, received those from the master by speaking. So people cannot understand it, e- e- even people read it. Even people hear it, hear that. So that's the aspect、uh, the、um, the bring the the word secret. So, but the meaning is, I would say,、uh, it is things not ordinarily ordinarily understood. So very difficult to understood. So that's a、uh, the things why people call esoteric. So dainichi nyorai、uh, is everywhere, but we cannot receive. The deities, the message, because our consciousness usually have three poisons. The things makes people bad:、um, hatred, uh, greed, ignorance. These three are we call、uh, three poisons. So the our blessing service,、um, the spiritual deities, are、uh, that help us. They taking off these three poisons from our consciousness. So the Buddhism practice、uh, provide a strong approach to take it off the these three poisons and then purify your consciousness and become a Buddha. So、uh, so Shingon and、um, uh, the mantras is a very、uh, great things as a part of the speaking practice. And this is a very easy to imagine when you have a bad speaking in the public,、uh, maybe bad things would would happen to you. So, so you can imagine that.、Hmm. So, but seems like、uh, 
you know, only, it sounds like it's only priests can achieve Buddhahood or the salvation uh, is available for anybody uh, on this planet. So I would say anyone can achieve it. So uh, as a Buddhist, uh, there is a practice we can provide, like, you know, it's, it's designed for the Japanese people, designed by the Japanese, uh, the tradition. But I mentioned simple, simple three things. Good action, good speaking, good thinking. This is uh, actually uh, very core um, the things for the practice. Uh, you can imagine uh, it, you know, instead as a Buddhist, as a director, so what is uh, your three things? When some Christianity or other religion people have a visit the temple, I'm always say that as a Christianity, as a Muslim, what is a good three things? Good, what is a good action? What is a good speaking? What is a good thinking? So, and now the visually we are different. I mentioned Mahabharata Chanavira's idea, but we are same. Just shape looks like uh, visually different. So uh, in general, people are as a mother, as a father, as a friend, many different uh, position each, pe each people has. If people think uh, three things practice as their position, so as a friend, what is a good speaking? What is a good action? Good, good, what is a good thinking? As an employee, as a customer as well. So, so the, the practice method is very simple. The Shingon Buddhism say, have a good three things and a good, good three things practice. Uh, take it off the three poisons from your consciousness. And then when you have uh, nothing in your consciousness, like nothing bad things in your consciousness, at the moment, you are the same as a Buddha. So this is a, a idea. Mm. So yes, thank you very much for this. Uh, I would like to ask you a surprise question before we end. Uh, yes, uh, Carving the Divine is about Buddhist sculptors of Japan and we see different kind of Buddhist statues uh, in our movie. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes people wonder why uh, Shingon has uh, so many statues, so many deities. Uh, I think it's uh, confusing for some people. Please, please tell us about it. Okay. We do have uh, many different statues, especially here in, in the center. You can see the, uh, our, it's a part of the deity, our founder, Kukai. And uh, right to he, this side, Kanon Bodhisattva, and that is a Fudomyo. So we have a three statues here. In the main hall, we do have uh, more statues. Uh, Yakushi Nyorai Bodhisattva, uh, 13 Buddhas uh, scroll, then um, um, Aizen Myo, different type of the Myo, Angry Face Buddha statue, we do have it. So uh, anyone can become a Buddha. So that meaning is we do have a, a statue as a number, as a human being. So. Uh, same as a human being's number. Everything is transformed by Mahabharata Buddha because we are part of the Mahabharata Buddha. So he transformed the, to the like a different shape, the, um, the things most appropriate. There is uh, some village uh, used to had some big uh, this, like a sickness, like a dis, uh, disaster uh, came to the village. There are many people. Uh, were very str uh, struggling. So they made a, a, a prayer to treatment the village, uh, secure and cure the village, and then uh, had a prayer to Yakushi uh, Nyorai Bodhisattva. The deity represented the cure, holding the medicine box. The village, after um, all illness is gone, after that, the village decide to uh, build a temple and they have a statue, the Yakushi Nyorai Bodhisattva. Which uh, statue uh, temple has, uh, like this, like the, depend on the history um, or some like a spiritual fate uh, influence. But mainly we do have a, a Mahabharata Buddha in the center, then have other deities inside. 
Hmm. So uh, you're saying that, you know, because uh, we have, a, we as a human beings so or creatures have a do different kind of uh, types. So, so as a, uh, statues as well. So means basically I can create or the, no, I can think of a, uh, the statue that I want to uh, worship or pray for and I can make it as a main deity. That's what you mean? Yes, uh, I, I, I would say yes. So I would say uh, you have similar things in our tradition. So Japanese tradition, Oihai is a Buddhism altar. Uh, the tablets written uh, the Buddhist name uh, and then the, the people pray for it. It's a part of the statue. The shape is different. It's about the same object. We pray. So what type of object, appearance, uh, design is appropriate? Um, the people create eventually. The meaning is you, you can create your things if you like. But uh, we do have uh, the Buddhas already. So our ancestors, uh, the people who be respect uh, around us. Hmm. So basically, uh, we are part of a Dainichi Ryorai or uh, we are Dainichi Ryorai. So it doesn't really matter what we uh, pray for because in the end, uh, we are the same. Yes. Beautiful. That's a very beautiful uh, philosophy behind. So I'm very impressed. So yes, uh, thank you very much, Reverend, for coming today. So if you think this information is useful, make sure to subscribe my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and like me on my Facebook, because that's how we do it in the 21st century. So thank you very much, Reverend Hayashi, for uh, coming to our show and explain to us basic concept of uh, Shingon Buddhism. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Seki. I'm very happy to have this opportunity today. Uh, I'm going to pray for all of the people's happiness. Thank you.